In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up your first process. Processes are helpful to set up automation and assign tasks to people, um, things like approval queues or follow up processes for people uh, who want to get connected in with your community. Um, there's all kinds of different ways to use processes. We're going to set up a really simple uh, process which is going to give us a good template for getting our volunteers to call new people. So on the left hand side, I'm going to click processes and go to the overview panel and you'll see that I don't have any processes. So it's going to ask me to create a process. I can either choose a blank board or I can use one of these other templates uh, like the new person follow up. I'm going to click the new person follow up template, um, which is going to come up with some defaults. So basically we've got a new person follow up uh, and the types that can be processed. So these are the kind of things that are going to go through this process board is a contact. So there's people that are going to go through this process. Um, for this, I can choose the mode, whether it's linear, whether they move from left to right, or whether it's kind of like a Kanban board where I delegate um, uh, certain tasks into certain lanes, kind of like a Trello board if you've ever used something like that. I'm going to leave it as a linear progression for this one. And I'm going to choose a realm. I'm going to put it up in our central church realm and hit save. And here you'll see I've got my new process board. It's got a week one column, a week three column, a week seven column, and a week 12 column. And underneath it's got some a little bit of information describing uh, what's going to happen for each column, including the automation. Um, here, if I tap these three dots, I can click and I can edit the column settings, or I can add a card into that column, or I can remove and delete the column. On the right hand side, I can add another column by clicking the plus, and I can give it a new name, and we'll just call uh, success successfully connected and we'll click continue and that will just add another column on the right hand side now uh, what I want to do to start with is I'm going to click new card and because contacts go through this process I can now select the people that I want to go through the process so I'm going to click this guy demo Brisbane and click done and it'll create a card here I can choose a due date, I can choose what state he's going to be in, so it's basically going to be in week one to start with, and I can also choose who it's going to be assigned to. So if I find myself here um, and assign it to me, and then with the realms, I'm going to choose Central Church and click Save. And now you'll see that I've got Demo Brisbane who's here. Now another way of doing this is you can set up your process by clicking Options, uh, the Options drop down for week one. I'm going to click edit column settings and here I've got all of the options for this uh, for this step. So there's a number of different options. Um, basically the simplest ones is we give it a name. So it's column one is week one. Uh, we can give it a description for people when they're looking at the board about what that column's for. We can also choose a column style which is uh, by default or we can gray it out like a waiting period. And then we've got our lifespan due date. So this is where the due date uh, of when a card drops into this column, we can set a due date of when the tasks need to be done by. So at the moment we have period of time after entry and this is one week after entry and we can also set a time uh, at 5 p.m. on the on the Thursday. So it will wait a week and the next Thursday at 5 p.m. that's when the card will be considered due. And down here we can also set automation, which is uh, there's basically three options. One is no automation, which basically means that when a card's in this column, it won't move out of this column until someone manually drags it into another column. Uh, the other option is to wait until the due date. And basically once the due date is up, uh, so one week after the entry on the following Thursday at 5 p.m., when that due date happens, uh, we can trigger some automation on whether it was successful or whether it failed, whether the tasks were done or not done. Uh, and the other option is we can choose as soon as all tasks are resolved, which means if I tick all of the tasks and I do all of the things before the due date, does it just automate and move to the next column? Uh, you know, it may be that. So for typical things like an approval process, you may want to have this so that as soon as the task is done, as soon as it's approved, it moves into the next step. Whereas for something like a follow-up process uh, where you want to call someone each week and you want to arrange these calls for week one and week two and week three, um, you actually want to leave this to wait until the due date, which basically means that if you do all of the tasks for that card, 
it will stay there until the due date where it will move into the next column and then get new tasks. If you change this to uh, as soon as all tasks are resolved, you may call the person, fill in the task or, you know, do that, do the task required for this column. And then immediately it would go to the next column and then you might, someone might say, oh, I got to call this person and you might call them and you can end up calling them three or four times in the same day. So uh, for a follow-up process, we're going to leave it as wait until the due date, which means even if it's completed early, it's still going to wait until the due date before it moves on. Down here, we've got the success option. So if uh, the card is successful and we complete all the tasks and all the things that are required of it, uh, we can choose that it's going to move forward. It's going to go to the next step, the next column. Uh, we also have options to move to a particular step, so we can just skip ahead or skip behind, or we can even move to a totally different process. Um, we can also set up reactions that can happen when these are successful. Um, and then over here with failure, if we click this, we can also choose what happens if it fails. Now, often uh, you may want to archive the card uh, or you may want to just leave it there so that someone has to actually come and clean it up. So if uh, you don't get things done by the due date, you may want it to stay in that column so then an overseer can come and sort it out or reassign it to someone else or get it done. Um, for a follow-up process, we actually want to move forward still. So even if they weren't called in the first week, we still want to move them into the second week to give them a phone call. So I'm going to leave if failed to be moved forward. Um, we can also set up who gets notified. Um, so in this column, if the card is failed, uh, do we notify an overseer? We can choose a contact from our database there. And we can also do some reactions and things like that. Now the next part uh, up the top here, the next tab is uh, tasks. So here we can add our tasks. So for this process, we have a task of call them. We want to call them and connect. Uh, if I click the three dots on this task and click edit, uh, I can also change the description. I can use HTML in there also. Um, but basically in here, I've got the task of uh, call them. And then here we've got the success. So what does the success look like if we call them? Uh, we can change, uh, by default, it'll be complete but uh, we can change that verbiage, we can change that word to be something else. So successfully connected. Uh, that's an option for uh, the person who's doing the task to tick. You'll see that in a moment. And we can also provide extra instructions about what a success looks like. And we can even choose a post type to request after they tick, uh, it's successfully connected. Uh, then we've got an attempt, which is basically a pending state. Um, that's been renamed. So if we get rid of that, it's pending. Uh, but this is something where we have an attempt to call. Uh, basically, we tried to call them or try to message them. We didn't get a response, but it's, we still tried. Um, and we can also put in information like uh, what that means so that your volunteers understand. And we can also disable this. So you can just disable it completely so that there is no attempt. Um, and similar for failed, we actually have a disable failed because uh, for a follow-up process, we actually can't fail this. A fail would be to not even attempt. Whereas uh, for a task, uh, like an, an approval queue or something like that, you may want a failed thing, which is like did not pass or something and it actually fails. We're gonna leave that as disabled. And we can also add extra tasks in here just by clicking add task. Um, ask them how their day was. And if we roll over, we can click and add extra details in here as well, just as a shorthand. We can also remove tasks by tapping the three dots and just clicking delete task. Now we can have multiple lists as well. You can have a list for um, one particular person or a particular set of tasks that need to be done. And you also have an option for repeatable tasks, which means if a card gets dropped back into this column, uh, do they have to repeat the same tasks? There's a number of other options which we'll go into in later videos for more advanced functionality. Uh, the third tab is forms. Here we can add uh, forms that we've created in our system that can automatically be sent out to people. And then when they're completed, that's considered a task complete that can move them on to the next step. Uh, similar with check-ins, we can uh, say that we require the person to check in at least once to a certain event before they can move forward. Uh, we're gonna leave that blank. And then over here we have a sign. Here is where we choose when a card comes into this column, what happens? Uh, if someone's been assigned, do we want to clear the assignees and assign it to somebody else? So we can assign it to specific people. So for instance, uh, I'll just search for myself in here. 
and we can make it so that once a card gets dropped into this column, it gets assigned to me. Or we can choose a team of people that gets assigned to you. So you may have like a follow-up team, um, which means that you can just keep managing that follow-up team. And when a card comes into this column, it'll be assigned to the follow-up team. And right at the end of the tab set over here, we've got actions. And here's where you can do a bunch of just a simple automation. Uh, you may want to send an email to the person uh, when they get to a certain step. Uh, you can send an SMS, uh, you can send a mail out, uh, you can change the status of someone. So for instance, uh, once someone gets to uh, week three, maybe you change their status and you, you change them to an active attendee. Um, you can also update their medical sheets, uh, other detail sheets that we've set. So once they get to step three, maybe they're considered employed or something like that. Uh, there's lots of different options there, including adding tags and removing tags and adding them to different groups and things like that. You can also share an access pass with them, which will give them access to Fluoro. So for instance, if you had a volunteer application process, maybe at the end of the process, they get access to log in, uh, something like that. Lots of different options in there. I'm going to hit save and we're going to uh, just uh, leave it here for the moment. And what I'm going to do is go to people, go to contacts, and I'll show you how we can bulk add people to the process. So if I select this page and we go over to our action sidebar on the right hand side, I'm going to click add seven to process and I can choose my new person follow up process. I'm going to click add seven and then that's going to create a task that will add all of those people and you'll see all those people have now been added to the process. Now from here, you'll see that each of them have that Thursday uh, 5 p.m date that's been added to their um, uh, due date that's been added to their card that means those tasks need to be done by that date. So I can tick this task and you'll see that it comes up with these options of uh, the detail about the task. It also comes up with uh, the option of I successfully connected, I attempted, or I, uh, I just mark it that I haven't done anything. So if I click successfully connected, it's also going to pop up and ask me, well, how did I connect? I called them. Yes, we connected. Um, it was a great chat and we can click submit and it'll ask me to choose a realm I'll just pick uh, there we'll hit submit and now I can hit save and you'll notice now that it moves down to the bottom of the list and it's green which basically means that it's complete and it says it'll progress in eight days uh, if I tap another card over here and I tap to uh, do the task uh, for this one I just attempted to call. So we'll say call, we didn't connect. Um, I couldn't connect with demo, uh, but I tried calling them. And then I hit submit and it's going to ask me for a realm for that. I'm just going to hit submit there. And you'll see that that's now gone orange, which basically means that it's pending. I'm going to hit save and you'll see here that it's orange in the pending state which essentially means that it isn't completed yet. It's still failed, but at least we can see that some effort has actually gone into trying to complete that task. Um, I can also drag and drop on this. So I can just drag this to week three and you'll see that he moves over here and he also gets a new task. So if you tap this, that task has been completed, but now he's got his week three tasks that we need to tick. And yeah, that's the basics of processes. There's lots of interesting things that you can do, including uh, change to the list view, which would give us a list of where everything's at. Uh, if you don't like the Kanban view or it doesn't uh, suit your needs for that particular moment, uh, we can also select all of the people in this list by clicking this uh, number six, which will select all six cards. Um, it gives us other options there. Or we can select each card uh, manually by tapping the face and you'll see that they highlight blue and I can either reassign the card to other people or I can move them to another step in bulk uh, or I can do things like send them an SMS or uh, a mail out uh, or I can just select all of the people uh, which will actually select the people in the cards rather than the cards themselves and I can do other things with them that way also. Uh, there's also lots of other things you can do with filters. Uh, to show uh, only the cards that you care about on the board at any particular time. Uh, yeah, but uh, that's enough for this tutorial.